today a story, and it's called Paolo's Parachute Mission. And just look and see what you see on the cover of this book. What does this say over here? An aerospace engineering story. Okay, so we all know an, A-N, and we all know story. How about, do you have any idea what type of work an aerospace engineer might do then? It might be engineers working in like um, one of a space station. Okay, engineers working in a space station. So, Paulo is, is from the country Brazil. of Brazil. Brazil. Okay, where is Brazil? Look up here and tell me what continent do you think Brazil is on? Yeah. Dallas. South America. South America. So Brazil is this right here. It's this country down in South America. It's actually the largest country in South America. So we're going to read about Paulo. Think about where he's from. Okay. And I'll be stopping every once in a while and having you guys think about a few things as we um, as we're reading through it. But I really want you to be good listeners. All right. So chapter one is no place like home. Paolo peered into the last cupboard cardboard box in his bedroom. Hiding in the shadowed corner was his soccer ball. Paolo hadn't felt excited that afternoon. Now that he was sitting in their new kitchen, he still didn't feel excited. He didn't want to be in this new house, and he didn't want to make any new friends. Why would he need to? He spotted a box next to the corner of the house and peered inside. Gardening tools, a wrench set, and well, how'd that get in here? The object he pulled out looked like an old scrap of fabric. So what are you noticing here? What does he have in his hands? Raise your hand. Kira? A parachute. A parachute. He held the paracatus up and then let it go, watching it drift slowly down to the ground. Why did your family move here? Lucas asked as they kicked the ball back and forth. For my parents' job. They're aerospace engineers, Paolo explained. Wow, they go into space? Lucas asked. No, they're not astronauts, Paolo said. Right now, they're working on a paracatus that will be part of a spacecraft, Paolo continued. Why, why do you think they're working on a parachute? When they're dealing with spacecraft, why do they need a parachute? Kira? Because maybe like when it's landing, they'll need something to slow it down. So, when the rockets land, something has to slow them down so they don't hit the ground too hard. So that's what Kira said. That's where the paracatus comes in. In Brasilia, my parents teach a whole course at the university about drag, air resistance. Here we are, Lucas said, a cupuaçu tree. Huge waxy leaves as long as Paulo's arms sprouted from the gnarled branches, making a bushy tuft at the top of the tree. The round, cream-colored cupuaçu were about the size of Paolo's soccer ball. So get that in your mind. You all know what a soccer ball looks like. Okay, that's the size of the fruit. Great, Paolo said. I'll just climb up and grab one, and then we can head back. The bark was rough under Paolo's hands as he pulled himself up the trunk. With a snap, Paolo broke the cupuaçu off the tree and held it in one hand. So what's their problem right now? Because they're starting to face a problem. They're trying to get the cupuaçu. What happened to it? It broke. Okay. So we'll splattered and broke. And Ava brought up a really good word because what? Gravity. We'll just kind of, we're going to put that in there because gravity took over. You know what we need, Lucas asked? Your paracatus. So do you think it's a good idea for them to use a, paracat a paracatus to get yep. the fruit down? No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If it's tough, if it's strong enough to, to be able to let it float slowly. If we design our paracatus well, it will help us solve the problem of getting the cupuaçu out of the tree without smashing. So you guys already came up with a big part of it. You found the problem and you identified that this is what we have to try to solve. Okay. Later that afternoon, after brainstorming many different paracatus designs, Paolo and Lucas decided on one they thought would work well. How many of you think it's going to work? Because they're up in the tree, they're getting ready. How many of you don't think it's going to work? The first time when they tried with the rocket, the rocks in the bucket, what did they do afterwards when that didn't work? They what? They improved it. They, improved it. they changed some things and they tried to improve it. Okay. Paolo released the paracatus. He held his breath as he watched the cupuaçu float down like a leaf in the wind. Finally, with a soft glide, the fruit landed gently on the ground. He ran down the hallway to his room, where the last box from the move still held his soccer ball. This time, a big smile spread across Paolo's face as he grabbed the ball and ran outside. <laughs> All right, so the first thing that I want you to be doing is thinking back to that drag. Okay, so you're going to think about a time when you felt drag, when you felt that 
kind of that air resistance, that air coming back at you or whatever it might be. Or you watched an object experience drag and you're going to draw a quick picture of what happened in the box. All right, so just a couple of quick ideas. You might get inspired by somebody right now if you haven't thought of anything. And that's okay, that's good. That's part of the process as we get inspired. Explain, us, explain a little bit about what you meant by the confetti. Um, the confetti is row above, it, it falls down very slow. Yeah, how, I never even thought of that one. I thought that's a great example when you throw that confetti up and it kind of falls slowly and drifts down, right? Um, Kira. While I was riding the bike and it was windy out. When you were riding your bike and it was windy out. And how did you, how did you answer number two? So the picture was you on a bike. What clues helped you realize that you were experiencing drag? to go forward. Yeah, so you were pushing, it was windy and the wind was coming at you, right? And so you're going forward and you're trying to push those particles out of the way, right? And so you could feel that kind of pushing on you. Yeah. And it, did it make it harder or easier? Harder. Made it harder work for you. Austin. Well, at my house, um, on my play set, mm -hmm. I jumped off something with a pair, well, um, with a sheet um, okay. and without one. Oh. And you go slower with, with the sheet. So when you jump with a sheet and without a sheet, what you go slower? It's probably probably not a, a lot slower. You wouldn't want to do that from a high yeah. spot. But what happens to the sheet? Um, that shows you. What are the clues? Like, um, blows up, kind of. Okay. And um, since and the air gets kind of trapped in when you're going down, so. Um, when the, if the air is trying to push up, it just hits the other air and makes that you go down slower. Okay, so it goes down a little slower. So what was one of the steps in the engineering design process that Paolo and Lucas talked about when they finally started talking about making their paracatus? What was one of those steps? Harrison? Ask questions. Ask questions. So we have to ask. Okay, that's a key thing. You want to know what the problem is. What are some things we can do to solve it? How has it been done in the past, if that's the case? Okay, there's a lot of different things in there. What else? What is it made of, right? Um, what's the next one? Ava. I just go Okay. Plan. Okay, so we're going to ask questions. We're going to plan it out. But before we plan, we have to do something else. Kira? Imagine. We have to imagine. And then what do we start to do once we have a plan in place? Justin? Improve. Oh, well, before we improve, I'm going to put that up here. But before we can improve, what do we have to do first? Create. We have to create it. Or create or design? OK. We're going to call it create. So we're going to ask questions. We're going to imagine all the possible solutions and brainstorming. And this is when it's really nice to work together with people. And then planning, creating, and then this part is, can be a lot of fun, too, because you come back and you're like, what can I change? That didn't work. The bucket of rocks didn't work. So they went back through the process, and they did this. Now, this process is circular for a reason, because they kind of go together. But you can go back and forth with them. Okay, as you're creating, you know, you're going to improve, you're going to go back, you're going to create again, but you still want to ask questions. After you improve, you're going to ask questions. So we kind of go around this in a cycle. Okay, I'm Corey Christensen. I teach third grade at Lake Elma Elementary in Minnesota. I love this storybook because it's bringing up a situation of a student or a kid that has a... Um, he has something different about him, and I think that that's been really good for the kids to relate to. Um, and I think the story has been really good because it, it, gives the, it gives kind of meaning to what they're trying to do in class. And I, I try to refer to it in the, every day and throughout the time that I'm teaching, bringing it back to that because then they can make the connections. I like that they were introduced to another culture, too, in, in Lesson 1, um, because we were talking about a, a student and his family from Brazil. And um, and so they were like they, they learned these new words, and um, but they could see also that a student's life in Brazil there was a lot of similarities to their lives that they experience every day too, and um, I, I know like I have a few students that were new to the school this year, so it was really helpful because that was one of the themes in that story was that this student had moved, and was making new friends, and that that's been really important this year for my my class because we've had a lot of that. Mm -hmm.